Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. Alright, welcome to a video. Today what we're going to do is we're going to start focusing on Batman black and white stories with the real purpose of it being to look at different artists take on um, uh, a certain character. And uh, so I asked on Instagram yesterday for recommendations and there's four volumes of this. And I mean, there's so many different artists that have done it, but this is volume one and Jonathan Wayshack, who's a great artist himself, um, said that he thought that this Ted McKeever story was one of the, the his favorites and one of the best. And so um, I read it this morning. I had never read it as far as I know. Um, and, uh, it was really, really good. It's, it's pretty sad. And, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the cover of the book. We're going to look at the Ted McKeever story. And then at the end, we're going to take a look at the Mark Silvestri, um, Batman pinup that he did at the end. So anyway, so the cover is Jeffrey Catherine Jones. And, uh, you know, what's interesting about this piece is I, I do actually find it quite odd that for the cover of Batman black and white, that they use the color image. Um, it is striking. I love the piece. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, the only thing is, is it, it, it's a little weird that it's in color, but I, I've always loved the cover and the binding on the, the side of the book is actually completely black, which, uh, when I was looking for, <coughs> excuse me, this particular book, it was very, very difficult for me to find it. Cause I kept thinking it was a, uh, like a bound sketchbook, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. What we're here to talk about is Ted McKeever. So uh, I thought we will read his little profile because I think it, it, it adds some uh, perspective to the style of work that he does. Uh, so Ted McKeever. Ted McKeever's singular vision of mankind's inner turmoil has left an indelible impression on modern comics. He is one of the few artists, writers of his generation not content with merely rehashing genre cliches. Ted's conscious decision to stay outside the world of mainstream comics allows his highly personal creation to defy being categorized. McKeever's work on such creator-owned projects as Eddie Current, Plastic Forks, and Metropole is as haunting as it is memorable. And this story is haunting, and it's very sad and kind of violent and stuff like that. And if you don't want spoilers, definitely read the short story first. And then you can come back and check out the video with my analysis s -s 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 of it. So anyway, beautiful establishing shot. Uh, uh, initially, Batman is sort of having a conversation with himself or whatever you want to call it, an inner monologue. Um, where he's talking about, you know, people will say that, that, you know, one of the sort of where you see the most human despair would be in a hospital, you know, people that are sick, families that are concerned, but he says it's not so where where the real despair is is you know the streets of Gotham the back alleys the da 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 and it's it's like he's really painting a picture of how depressing Gotham is and whenever like like for me I, I actually I love everything about the whole Batman thing whatever you want to call it I always think of Arkham Knight I think that those games are really really fun and great and uh it's it's like the, the opportunity to run around in those worlds is just really incredible. They should just keep doing more and more of them because I think that they're, the, the, the variety that they could do is great. So anyway, so the dance begins. This is really, really interesting. So throughout the story, there's a symbolic cut cutaway that you're going to see where he keeps going back to this couple dancing. This actually represents Batman and the woman that is going to be in the story in a moment. Uh, and, uh, it is really, really sad. So get ready for that too. So anyway, we, we start to go in the interior of, I would assume this building right here at the back of this building. And, uh, you know, you see some medical stuff here and like little, you know, just like kind of technology things. And, uh, we're going to keep heading in to this. And, uh, now we're cutting into an autopsy room and there's a deceased woman on this table and Batman is pondering things. So get ready folks. Here we go. <sighs> Batman is analyzing her wounds and he's trying to put together what exactly went on. And, um, you know, he talks about, uh, you know, what, what, what incited this? Did you have jewelry? Was it, you know, motivated by this or that? And, uh, this is kind of the greeting. They're meeting each other. Here's the greeting. This is really, really well done. Um, and, uh, then you see Batman and he's analyzing her wrist. It's fractured. It's a protection wound. He feels that at some point the perp, 
either swung a bat at her or some sort of club and broke her wrist. He then goes on to say that all the bruises and scrapes and cuts on her body make her look fragile. Stick with me if this is seeming really depressing, because it's actually really, really, it's a great story. And, uh, you know, don't let it bum you out if you're sensitive to this kind of stuff, because it's it's really interesting the way that he orchestrated all this. Um, So, uh, and then Batman's sort of in his mind, like, picturing, like, what potentially could have happened. Um, you know, there, there was a protection move on her part, um, and uh, they, they're they connecting. They're starting to connect as Batman's putting these pieces together. The dance is ensuing. Um, he says that there's bruises on her. Uh, her clavicle has been broken, which could have been from falling. There's bruises on her neck, which could have been from strangulation or could have been like the guy holding her down in the alley. And, um, uh, you know, saying that she was struggling for air. Um, oh, and then as, as, as he's piecing together what went on, she starts to crack a smile. And then Batman says that it's the rigor mortis setting in and it's, you know, <laughs> pretty bleak and depressing i was reading this i was like god dang this is some dark shit but that's what's cool about batman too is you can do really really fun stories that are like you know whatever and and you can do something really really serious and dark so i think that there's there's this um opportunity with a character like batman to really explore a lot um yeah so he's saying that he remembers that it was the ring setting so he says that there's dry blood in her mouth and so that he knows that she knew that she was going to be killed um you know that like she was like she was aware that she was dying basically uh and then he notices though on her fist that she might have taken a swing at the guy and hit him because she has lacerations on her knuckles that would would uh connect with with it uh that's actually an offensive move and uh, he says, you know, that's my girl. So, you know, he's pr he's proud of her fighting for her life. And then as he takes a closer look and the dance continues, he spots pieces of teeth in her hand. And uh, then there's this moment where he says, she got you. And he yanks out the teeth. And then he basically says that, like, uh, she got you, you bastard. Um, but he's saying that, like, you know, basically with with his technology um you can see they're embracing and like the like like the connection between them is is really um uh kind of being cemented here at this point um and uh batman basically says with his technology he's definitely gonna be able to figure out who who did this crime it's it's like he goes so far beyond like traditional police um there's still one more thing left for me for you to do for him which is he needs to know who she is um and it's like you've allowed me to step inside your circle now um allow me to search your body so he starts to do the autopsy um and uh, at this point uh they break apart and you're like, whoa, okay, what is going on? She's she's seems to be leaving him. Uh, and so anyway, then it cuts to this diner. Batman enters the diner. And uh, there's one panel here that I actually want you guys to try to help me with. Because this is happening at probably 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning at this point, as far as I can tell. Um, and uh, so, you know, there's one guy having coffee. And there's the woman behind the counter. The bells ring, the woman behind the counter reacts, and then there's, like, a kid? Like, a baby? It doesn't seem to play into any part of the story, as far as I can tell, unless I totally missed something. But yeah, I'm not really 100% sure what the, where the baby comes from. Um, and uh, then Batman's talking about, like, you know, people always think that I'm victorious and that, that uh, you know, I win the fights and stuff like that. And he goes, he, he was basically saying that he always loses because no matter what, there's always someone that he didn't get to in time. There's, there's always a crime that even though he solves... Uh, it, it's, it's too late for the victim. And, uh, he always carries that weight on his shoulders, the ones that I'll mourn forever. Uh, so he shows the picture of the woman to the waitress and says, you recognize this girl? She's like, yeah, you know, she comes in here all the time. She's obviously very, very upset. And she said, you know, she was just in here this evening and, um, you know, she can't believe that she's been killed. And so, you know, the dance sort of, uh, you know, is, is time is stretching it's like it's the, the, the everything is starting to connect um and basically what what happened is 
purchased. The what she had in her body could only have been purchased from this diner. It was she had blueberry pie in her stomach, and uh, the only place that was nearby that would have sold it would have been here. So he was able to figure out that that would be potentially where she may have came from, and that they would know who it was. And um, you know, he basically wishes her well and sort of like the afterlife. And now she's not like a nameless Jane Doe. She's you know Chelsea Rain. And um, then she kind of dances off into the darkness. It, it's it's really, really a sad story. I think it's it's a real kind of beautiful Batman story. It's it's quite dark and, and kind of violent. But, uh, you know, I think uh, excellently done. So thank you, Jonathan, for that recommendation. And then, uh, yeah, let's look at, look at the, um, the Sylvester pinup as sort of the grand finale of this. So to me, this is one of the more iconic Batman pieces that's been done in, like, the last, like, 20 or 30 years, I, I think. Um, I don't know what it is about this piece in particular. It could be just that it's, like, a dead-on front shot. It's beautiful. De it's beautifully detailed. The inks by Bat and the pencils by Sylvester are just killer, um, and uh, it's just kind of all win. They just did a black and white statue of this recently, but um, yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's just a really really fantastic piece. Even that just sort of suggestive background, it's like just. It's loose, it's tight, it's all the good stuff that you want. The bats are really, really interesting positions, and um, I love it. I think it's really, really good, and, and again, it's just it seems like it's a very memorable piece. Sorry, right, that was the Ted McKeever Batman Black and White story. Very sad, very impactful, um, and uh, if you have recommendations, I mean, these books cover everything from Bruce Timm to Atomo. Kevin Nolan, I mean, Klaus Jansen was a recommendation. There's four volumes of this, so we could have a lot of fun, and we'll try to do maybe, like, one a week. I mean, I would definitely be totally down to do um, uh, an another one soon. I think Bisley, like, I saw Simon Bisley's name in this. Um, so, yeah, if you have if you have a Batman Black and White story you'd like to see me sort of go through, let's do it. And uh, thank you for following me on YouTube. We're literally four subscribers away from 11,000 subs on my channel, which is unbelievable. What's, what's crazy about that is the fact that I shot a video not that long ago where I was like, one day if we ever get to 10,000 subs, and when I heard it, I was like going like you cracked 10,000 and it wasn't that long ago. So the channel is actually growing it at a more rapid rate now, which is very, very cool. So thank you if you've come by and uh, yeah, you know, we have a lot of fun and what do we do? We just, we really like, we celebrate art and artists. That's what my channel is about. It can be comics, but it's illustration, fine art, you know, the whole thing. I'm just into really good art and good stories, you know, good, good writing and good stories. All right. Have a great day. I love you all. Bye.